Hey Abrisers, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel or even are watching this now because of one of my TikTok videos where I share some design and fashion tips, thank you for showing up. It really, really means a lot to me. Last week, I shared a TikTok video. Yes, I am making TikTok videos now. Who would have thought? Where you create zines from scratch and um, as promised I wanted to share more of the nitty-gritty details of how to create a proper zine and so some of you may be thinking what is a zine why should I even care well a zine it's pronounced like the ending of a magazine it's to really share your self-expression your creativity this is not for profit and it's a way to really talk about content that you may not see in mainstream media it might be too niche it might be too risque whatever the case it is it's a form of your self-expression right, in your Adobe suite and design program you want to create a new project I'm going to change the units to inches and you can really just change the sizing of your zine to however big or small you want it I'm going to use a typical um, letterhead size just because, you know, if you wanted to create this from home, um, that's probably the most available um, and easy size you can start off with. So keep in mind, this is a book format um, and you, it's essentially going to be folded in half. So what is half of eight and a half by 11? We're going to keep one side of it 8.5 inches and then half of 11 is 5.5 inches. When you add that together, it's going to make 11. So you wanna keep the pages even numbers because you'll have the front and back page and then your inner pages. So let's create it. This is what it looks like. And as you can see on the right hand side, these are your main pages. Do you see the 12 pages that um, we asked for before? This is gonna be your front page, your back page and then your inner pages here. I do want to stress the importance of a bleed. So let's just make sure that our document setup is set up correctly. Again, you can see facing pages, um, five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then this is really important. Um, might not be important for an in-home print job, but a bleed allows the print shop, the local print shop that you're going to um, get these made from. It's going to allow them to make sure that um, there's enough artwork around the main canvas so that it won't have any like weird gaps. So a typical bleed would be 0.25 inches and you want to have that all across top, bottom, inside, and outside. Press OK. And you see this red line? That is your 0.25 inches bleed. So I'm going to open up the Asia zine that we created. As you can see, this is our front page and our back page. And you can see the bleed in this right or in this red border right here. If you press on your keyboard W, you can hide all of your rulers your different markers, all that kind of stuff. And so that will be the actual print you will see in your final results. So I'm gonna turn all these layers off so we can just see the blank pages that we can start off with. I suggest being really organized with your layers so you can turn them on and off and really be more organized with how you create your layouts for each page. So. You wanna create your background, and it's really important to have your background go to the bleeding area. Turn this background on, this layer on, and here you can adjust it so it hits the red marker point. So when the printer goes to print, we're gonna turn it off, but you see how they have extra room just in case that the printer itself is not aligned perfectly every time. You're not gonna have like a weird white gap 
in your pages. It's going to stay this background that I assigned at all times. Alrighty, so here is the front cover. My background is now turned on. You see how this background is, is extended to the bleed. I'm gonna add my photos and my text. So this is where your creativity can come into play, right? You can essentially have anything that you want in here. I got a little bit creative and extended my image so that it bleeds through the second page. I also added numbers and that's another, it's kind of trickier, but I guess I can show you now. If you go to your master page right here on the right hand corner, double click it, you can see where it says A and then Uprisers World Edit and Asia Jackson's own hashtag that she went viral with. So why is it called an A? It's because InDesign knows what page you are assigning each one to. And so this is like a universal um, language that it's telling InDesign that if you are on page three, it's going to show page three. So what you want to do, I'm just going to delete this for one second. Workspace. Okay. I am going to create a text layer right here. This is where I want my pages to be. You see this cursor that's blinking? Now you want to go to type, insert special character, markers, current page number. You see how that A just popped up? Um, I'm going to adjust that so it is the right, um, it is the right font. Maybe I want to make it a little bit smaller. It's really up to you. So now there's A. So that is going to be in your master pages. So then you want to drag that to the specific page. So I'm just going to do number three. As you can see, the three populated, right? But maybe I don't want it to feel so repetitive. Maybe I only want the second page number to show up only on the second because everyone knows that this next page is number three. So what you're gonna do is click shift, command, and then this number three. And then I wanna just delete it. That doesn't affect anything in terms of the master pages and the, the pages that you see afterwards. You see how it's all, see how this one is overlapping and I wanna take that out. This one, the number eight, I already took that out manually. The nine has appeared and so forth. Alrighty, so you are done with creating your first scene. Really, really exciting. And now you're ready to send it off to the printers. If you're doing it from home, totally go ahead, save it as a PDF and print away. If you want to send it off to printers, you want to save it in a proper, proper format. Um, there's a universal way that I suggest um, saving it as, but depending on your local printer, they are going to ask for specific requests for the file. So definitely follow that. If not, here is a great first step. File, export. I want to create an Adobe PDF print. So I'm just going to say final YouTube, since this isn't the final product that we are doing. You want to click save. High quality print. I want to do all pages. I want it to make it as a spread. And then you want to go to marks and bleeds. So you want to use the document bleeds that we initially assigned at the beginning of this video to 0.25 inches and then you're gonna export. Okay, so this is giving me an error, right? So it's saying that this document contains links to files that are missing or modified. This is a really good indication that I need to go back to my document and figure out what's up. So I'm gonna press okay, press the, um, press the keyboard W, 
Oh, okay. I see where my error is, right? There's question marks on all of these photos. So I want to be able to relink them because right now InDesign is saying that it can't find this image. And if you actually print it without fixing this error, it's going to print out super blurry. So, okay. I see it here and in my link section, it's also showing up the question marks. Click this link button. And I'm going to find that image. So go to my zine edits and let's see where that image is. Okay, I found it. Click open. And you see this? It's relinking these images now. Sometimes it takes a little while because these are large files. You want to make sure that your images that you are using is at least 200 dpi. And that is going to account for a really good resolution um, print job so it's not blurry or pixelated or anything like that. It says search directory and found 22 missing links. Awesome. So you see over here on the right hand corner, all those question marks. Because I saved all of my content into one folder, it was able to find all of my missing links. So I'm going to say OK and awesome. Now we don't have any question marks throughout the zine. So I'm going to go back, file. Again, I'm going to save it as final YouTube since this is just to show you guys what to do. Replace, high quality print. Again, it's going to be a spread marks and bleeds, use the document bleed settings, and export. Once you export, this PDF is going to show up. And as you can see, these markings on the corners of each page are the bleed areas. So it's really good to just cross-reference, make sure everything is looking good, the photos aren't pixelated, um, there's bleed areas for every single page. And once it's good to go, you want to send it off to your printers or print at home, and that's it. You all did it, so proud of you all. As a community-driven streetwear brand where we focus on storytelling and amplifying voices of underrepresented organizations, individuals, stories that we are really passionate about telling, uh, these types of zines are really important for us to create because it gives us an outlet to share the stories that we really want to amplify. And so I hope that this was informative. It shows you how to create your own zines at home. And I will see you next week, Uprisers. Keep fighting the good fight.